Hey everybody, just got all these saws out, getting ready to pack them into the car for uh, Andy's event tomorrow and drive it down to Pennsylvania. It's about a three hour ride. Hope the Grand Prix does okay. It's done good the last three or four times down there, so should be aight. But I thought I'd give you a little, little bit of a longer form video here, uh, telling you about these saws a little bit. This is like my running collection. As I know you guys have seen on the rest of the channel, I've had a, I've got a bunch of other ones, but they're mostly part saws or projects and stuff like that. But this is this is what I have to run at the moment, and I've had a lot pass through my hands that you know I regret selling and stuff like that. But <clears throat> this is what I got right now. Let's jump right into it. We'll start with this little 300. So I got this saw in a uh, pile of basically part saws. It was missing the muffler but somebody had stuffed a rag up in the cylinder, which was smart of them, and it ended up saving it. So I never looked into this thing. I just saw the rag hanging out there, whatever, and I just set it aside. And then last year, when Andy told me that him and John were gonna build uh, 300s to race, I said, I think I have one, and sure enough, I still had this guy sitting there, but I didn't have a muffler, and I wasn't about to spend money on something that we were just gonna, you know, have fun with so it was supposed to be like a super budget build even though I ended up buying this Forester bar but whatever we won't talk about that so anyway this stack is off of an XL12 and I barely had to modify it to make it fit it covers the port really well it sounds really good and it runs fantastic with that stack on there and like I said all I had to do was uh, widen these holes a little bit to get the bolts to fit in there and it works good and these are actually those little exhaust like spacers in the, uh, I don't know exactly what they're called, but they are uh, they sit inside the bigger mufflers on the XL12s. I had a couple of these laying around, so they worked good as like big washers because I didn't have short enough bolts. I just had these long ones. So it's really, it's really hillbillied up, but I'll tell you what, it's been on there for like a year. I've cut firewood with this all, you know, this is like my go-to saw and I've, it's been nothing but good to me. So super happy with that. I don't think I've, I've never been in the carburetor. I've never, done anything i never even put a fuel line in it spark plug nothing i had to tighten the spark plug the other day i realized it was loose but i've literally done nothing to this saw but put a bar and chain on it and that stack that's it and this thing has been absolutely fantastic it runs crazy rpm it fires up every single time i love it um this xl 113 actually similar kind of story I, whereas i never really had to do anything to it um, I got this at, um, at a flea market. Uh, I want to say I paid like 40 bucks for it or something. It was covered in grime and uh, had good compression. Paid the man, brought it home and put some fresh gas in it, fired right up. And I haven't had an issue with it whatsoever. It runs absolutely flawless. I love it. This 114, there's a good story behind this one because uh, I didn't even find this saw. So a year or so ago when I was down visiting Andy, uh, he loved the 113, um, and I told him how badly I wanted to find the matching 114 for it. And um, I want to say probably eight months ago or so, he, was, he uh, was at a buddy's house, and he spotted this 114, and... Uh, snagged it for me, offered the guy whatever. I don't remember what he paid for it, but then we did some trading, and I think I traded him. I don't remember. I have to look back. I traded him a couple saws for it, so we were both we were both happy. I got my matching 114, 113 duo, and I was thrilled. Um, but that thing that thing runs really good. The only problem I did have with it is it didn't oil when I first got it. And uh, I don't remember exactly what was wrong with it, but it oils good now. Um, this 120AM, actually both these saws on the end we can put together. The 120AM and the XL76, these were both um, came from, I don't want to mispronounce his name. He's a guy that built saws in Canada. I think it's Pascal is his name, and I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but it starts with a D. Um, he built both of these saws for me. They've both been really good. This 120 AM has been fantastic. I haven't run it a lot, but from what I have run it, it's been fantastic. I should probably wipe these down a little bit. Um, the 76, I did have a running problem with. Um, 
not that long ago when I was trying to cut some firewood and uh, it actually what ended up being was the uh, the plate in here was bent over and rubbing on the chain so it kept stopping the chain slowing the chain down it was keeping like constant tension on the chain and I thought I, I thought the saw was bogging I thought there was some other problem and then I I figured that out so stupid simple but it's been it's been good ever since um let's go down on this end here this is a XL 500 these are like 74 cc's I want to say something like that um this is actually a pretty cool roundabout story how I got this too because um this was listed on marketplace in New Jersey for really cheap I want to say it was like 30 bucks or something like that but it's like a really far drive for me so I sent the link to John Gies down in um down in Jersey and I was like oh here dude if you you know if, if you're interested in this go grab it and I wasn't gonna ask him I wasn't asking him to get it for me or anything I'm like go go grab this thing it's you know real cheap and I know you love your XLs so he went over and grabbed it and it was just sitting when I went down last uh, a couple months ago when I went down to his house for that last saw event um he had it sitting out, but he hadn't done anything with it. It was still all covered in, you know, dirt and stuff. So I did some wheeling and dealing. I traded him a really nice XL12 I had and a really nice, actually a decent, I don't think it was real nice, a decent XL925. And then I got this home and I went completely through it. I think this is the first build that's on this channel, actually. So if you guys go back, you can see this build. Um, not really in its entirety. Uh, I don't have like a tripod or anything. I don't film a lot of what I actually do, which I think I'm going to change at some point. I'm going to start filming a lot in a lot better detail. But so yeah, I initially I found that on Marketplace, told him to go grab it. He did, and then it was just sitting there waiting for me. Basically, I made him an offer he couldn't refuse. This XL12 um, is actually an XL400 uh, motor crankcase, everything. Um, it's just got all the XL12 parts on it, and uh, the reason for that is, well, frankly, the XL400 body parts were in really bad condition, and I I just wanted it to look a little bit cleaner, and uh, I decided at that time when I was putting it together, like, it would be pretty cool if I had a really fast XL12, you know, like, that's when I first started getting into the faster stuff. I'm like, uh, let's try and make it really fast. That way when it races a regular XL12, people are like, what the hell? That thing's like souped up or something. And that's exactly what happened. I got my, uh, I got my moment down at, uh, at John's this year. Um, racing, uh, what was it? Eric Hildebrandt, I think. He was actually running an XL400 too, but this one beat up on him and he's looking over at it. He's like, how the hell is an XL12 beating up on my XL400? And we were just laughing, you know? But uh, that video is on uh, Jeff Hendricks' YouTube, if anybody wants to see it. But this thing runs fantastic, pulls a 24-inch bar. I love it. Uh, there's a couple giveaways that you can tell it's a XL400. The first one is there's a decomp button right there. I had to actually drill this out so that it would fit. Um, another way you can tell it's not what it, it says it is, is because this tank is actually off of a Super XL. The oil fills up here on the XL400, so I left that alone, obviously. It's still the whole main body is XL400. And just the tank and the recoil, that's all off different saws. But yeah, that was a fun build when I did that. That's uh, That might be on this channel, I'm not sure. I'll have to look back. But here's the Super XL we did pretty recently. Um, this is the one that we ported and uh, rebuilt. I uh, pulled that 16 inch bar really well. I had the Carlton on it for a while and this is going to be its first time pulling a 20 inch so we'll see how it does. Um, it's it's run very well for me so far. I'm excited to run that. And then we've got the uh, this fucking piece of shit. Sorry, pardon my language. Uh, we got our rat rod saw. So this thing was just another one of those sitting in the junk pile and I wanted to I wanted to build something that would look like complete garbage but cut really well you know so I ended up putting this thing together 
just for fun. Um, it's got a, uh, a five degree advanced chip in it. Um, I didn't do any port work to this actually. I probably should have come to think of it. Probably would have helped out with that pipe a little bit, but I mean, it, it runs, it runs all right. Uh, Saturday is going to be the main test. I did already have it in wood the way it's set up right now, and it was, you know, I wasn't real impressed. Um, I couldn't really exactly get it tuned exactly how I want and have it idle, so, so I got to play with it a little bit more. Maybe we get down to Andy's tomorrow, I'll play with it some more. But I think it was pretty fun to put together. And then this uh, Canadian 177. Uh, this is actually one of the bigger videos that blew up on my page was uh, all those Polands coming out of my trunk. And uh, that was just like a random pile of saws somebody listed on Marketplace. And I saw this saw sitting in the background. And I ended up getting the whole lot for 150 bucks. So everybody that commented on that video saying that I just wasted my money on a bunch of junk. Uh, I paid $150 and I got like, I don't remember what it was, like 17 saws. You know, a bunch of Polands, I get it, but there was like three Super XLs in there. There was a uh, Remington PL4 or something like that in there. And then there was this beautiful Canadian in there for 150 bucks. I'm not complaining. It was like an hour drive. Everybody's like, oh, you wasted your money. I'm like, ah, I don't fucking think so. But anyway, we put this 177 together. I don't know if you guys remember that. If you watch anything on my channel, it's been sitting up at my father's house in the basement. I went and got it a little bit earlier. <clears throat> I haven't fired it up yet at all. It's been sitting since we put it together, basically. But it ran fantastic when we put it away, so I'm excited to uh, excited to dump some gas in it tomorrow and get it going. I'm just going to do trial and error, basically, all day tomorrow. I don't care. I don't want to fill everything up with gas and do that today and then have them all be leaking gas in the car on the way down, you know, in the trunk. So we're going to just do trial and error. I think the 76 should be fine. The 120 AM should be fine. Both these should be absolutely fine. The 300's never let me down. The 500's been great. That's been great. Everything's been great except for the rat, the rat rod. That's the only thing that I'm probably gonna have problems with tomorrow, I think. Because even this thing was fantastic. The 77, that was fantastic last time I had it out. So I'm not worried about that at all. But that rat rod's gonna give me nothing but trouble and I'm probably gonna end up lighting on fire tomorrow. So we'll see. But anyway. I'm going to get ready to start packing them up in the, in the trunk. i got to put all my, get all my tools together. So I bring my toolbox with me every time in case I have any problems with the car or any problems with the saws while I'm down there. I need to work on something quick. So i got to put my whole toolbox together, clean up. Get ready for, get ready for heading out in the morning. But this might have been a super boring video for you guys, but those of you that waited and listened to the stories on each every one of them, I appreciate that. Um, I'll definitely be taking a bunch of videos for you guys tomorrow. Probably won't upload them all tomorrow. I'll be, you know, cutting all day and driving back. It's a three-hour drive, so uh, maybe Sunday we'll get some shorts up, and then I'll put together some uh, longer format ones for you guys during the week. But, yeah, wish me luck. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll uh, I'll see you next time.